The autumn of when I was 12 years old, my mom took my dad to the emergency room. We were in Williamstown, Massachusetts to visit my parents' alma mater, Williams College. That afternoon, we had driven up Mount Greylock to see the fall foliage. It was on the way down that my dad began to grimace as he gripped the steering wheel. Jim, what's wrong? Are you okay? My mom asked him. My little sister and I looked on from the back seat, too scared to speak. My stomach, he grunted. I have a terrible pain. Do you want me to take you to the emergency room? My mom asked him. Yes, he said. This was coming from the man who never called in sick to his work as radiologist. So my mom took the wheel and we hurried down the road to the nearest hospital. Fast forward two hours after waiting in the emergency room. My dad lies in a hospital bed, waiting for the results of his abdominal CAT scan. As a radiologist, he was used to reading MRIs and CAT scans. So when the images from his scan came back, he looked at his own x-rays and diagnosed himself with transitional cell cancer. You may be wondering, what exactly is transitional cell cancer? You've probably heard of breast cancer or lung cancer, but not transitional cell cancer. Transitional cell cancer is cancer of either the kidney, the ureter, or the bladder. My dad had a rare form of transitional cell cancer. His was in his kidney and his ureter. This is a very rare form. Only 3,600 people get transitional cell cancer of the ureter in the entire United States per year. If you drew this in a pie graph, you couldn't even see the sliver of people because it's that small. And if you put it into percent form, it would be 0.001%, a thousandth of a percent. And of the people who get transitional cell cancer of the ureter, most are smokers. So how does a man in his 40s who is healthy and non-smoking get a cancer associated with people who smoke? I'm here today to shed light on Lynch syndrome, a genetic disorder that makes you prone to getting many types of cancer because you can inherit it from a parent and pass it on to a child. You cannot tell that you have it from the outside and it could end your life. So you may be wondering, what exactly is Lynch syndrome? Lynch syndrome is a genetic disorder that makes you likely to get 13 types of cancer. The most common ones are ovarian cancer, endometrial cancer, and colon cancer. But there are 10 other types you can get, including gastrointestinal cancer, renal pelvic ureter cancer, transitional cell cancer, bladder cancer, bile duct cancer, prostate cancer, liver cancer, pancreatic cancer, esophageal cancer, extrahepatic bile duct cancer, and brain cancer. Now you may be wondering, what are the chances of somebody with Lynch syndrome of getting cancer compared to somebody who does not have Lynch syndrome? Let's take the two most common cancers. First off, endometrial cancer. This is the cancer of the lining of a woman's uterus. A woman who does not have Lynch syndrome has about a 2% chance of getting endometrial cancer over her entire lifetime, as shown in the pie chart here. But a woman with Lynch syndrome has, a 60, has about a 64% chance of getting endometrial cancer. Here you can compare the two pie charts. The blue sliver in each chart is the chance of getting endometrial cancer. Another example is colon cancer. Colon cancer affects both men and women with Lynch syndrome and is the most commonly associated cancer. Somebody who does not have Lynch syndrome has about a 2% chance over their lifetime of getting colon cancer. But somebody with Lynch syndrome has a 55% to 85% chance, shown here. And let me remind you that most people who have Lynch syndrome do not realize it. Wouldn't you want to know you had an 85% chance of getting colon cancer. Several years ago, my family didn't even realize that we had Lynch syndrome. I didn't know Lynch syndrome even existed. But it all started with my grandmother, Tutu. Tutu was the type of person who would always look put together, have a great outfit on, 
She would wake up at 5.30 in the morning just to get the daily chores done. She liked to have control over her life, but the one thing she couldn't control was cancer. When Tutu was 48, a kid type of cancer called meningioma began growing, or meningioma began growing on the lining of her brain. It turned out to be benign, but it was a scare. Four years later, Tutu got endometrial cancer and had to have that cancer removed. She also had to go through radiation. When Tutu was 52, she got colon cancer and had to have that cancer removed. Then she had to go through chemotherapy. Years later, when my dad got his transitional cell cancer in a rare form, my family began to wonder if there was an explanation for why people had gotten cancer so many times, an explanation better than just bad luck. That explanation was Lynch syndrome. Lynch syndrome is a genetic disorder, which means that it's passed on through DNA. People live with Lynch syndrome having a mutation in a gene that codes for a type of protein. The job of this protein is to check for mistakes in DNA made from newly copied cells. If there's a mistake in the DNA, the protein is supposed to catch it and fix it. But people with Lynch syndrome have a mutation that means that the protein is not able to do its job. This means that cells with DNA that code them to be cancerous get by unnoticed. And as these cells grow and reproduce more, a tumor builds up. The mutations that code for Lynch syndrome are located on the second chromosome, third chromosome, fifth chromosome, or seventh chromosome. All of these are autosomal dominant mutations. To put this in real life perspective, if somebody with Lynch syndrome has a child with somebody who does not have Lynch syndrome, their kids have a 50-50 chance of having Lynch syndrome. In my case, my dad has Lynch syndrome, but my mom does not. So my sister and I have a 50-50 chance of having Lynch syndrome. So if you suspect that Lynch syndrome runs in your family, you can get tested through a blood test. This means that a sample of your blood will be taken and the DNA in a cell will be examined for the mutations that can cause Lynch syndrome. If you find out that Lynch syndrome does run in your family and you are somebody who has Lynch syndrome, there is action you can take to prevent getting cancer, specifically types of screenings. Once a year, my dad gets a colonoscopy, which is a screening of his colon for any types of growths that are cancerous, polyps. Hopefully these polyps are removed before they grow to be dangerous. You can also get a cystoscopy, which is a screening for bladder cancer, or an upper endoscopy, which examines your esophagus and your stomach for cancer. Women are at risk for endometrial cancer and ovarian cancer, so they can get a hysterectomy, which removes these reproductive organs in hopes that they will not get cancer there. To me, I do not know if I have Lynch syndrome or not. There's no way of knowing until I get tested. Hopefully I will be tested in my 20s and I will find out then. But until then, I just have to wait, wondering, will I get cancer? What are my chances of getting cancer? Did I inherit my family's disease? I simply do not have a way of knowing. But what I can take away from this and what I urge you to do is spread the word about Lynch syndrome. Make sure people know about it. Because taking action to prevent getting this cancer and knowing that you have a disease can save a life. So my final takeaway from this is that the possibility of me having Lynch syndrome has made me really appreciate life. So try. Go talk to somebody new. Reconnect with an old friend. Tell your parents that you love them and tell your siblings that you love them. Because the possibility of me having Lynch syndrome has made me realize that life is precious and you cannot take it for granted. Thank you.